I know, there's nothing worse than when a show jumps the shark and they do something like a lame compilation episode where they have clips of old episodes and, you know, they sit around and say, Oh yes, that was funny. Remember the time when uh, we got stuck in that storage locker? I remember it well. And then they go back and they show the, <laughs> the clips from that show. Well, in a way, this is sort of like that, but I promise you, I'm not jumping the shark on this. What this is, is this is a video, this magic disappearing box that I made over a year ago, and there's really a reason for me to show it again, is because I shot it in two parts, and it was really long, and it was before I learned the value of keeping my videos short, because none of us here on the internet have any sort of attention span. And so, <laughs> and so I went back, re-edited it, took out all the junk that you really don't need, and made a shorter video of it. And, well, now it's longer because I've added all this nonsense. But I promise you, I'm, I'm trying not to jump the shark, but... Hey, wait! There's Cousin Oliver! <laughs> project this time is the magic disappearing box and I'm gonna have Wyatt explain to you how it works. This trick is all based on perspective. See when I open the box it appears empty. But realize I didn't stick the bunny in this way. It's a mirror in there and there's a mirror in the top too. On the top part. So you can put them on either side and it makes for a really cool illusion. It's a fun project so I'll get started on this and uh, show you how you can make your very own disappearing box. I've got eight strips of wood and they're all inch and a quarter wide by ten and a half inches long. Now it's just a matter of gluing up all eight of those rails and styles to make two frames. I've got the two uh, framed panels glued up and dried and then I just cut four half inch plywood panels that are going to be used for the other sides. With that just kind of carefully put together and you can see I've got the 45 degree angles cut on all pieces and they'll set down about like that. Now what I've done that uh, everything's glued up except for the top of course is I cut quarter inch uh, plywood panels to use as doors for the top and for the side. So I'm just drilling a real shallow hole there to hold these little rare earth magnets that I can use as a latch. Now I'm painting all of the inside surfaces of the box a matte black. And what the flat black does is it absorbs all the light that might be going into this box and helps with the illusion. Now it's probably a good time to go ahead and put the hinges on, get them fitted correctly. So I picked up some white vinyl tape and instead of painting stripes on the inside, I'm just going to lay it down and uh, it'll work out really nicely. I finished putting in the stripes and they only are going to go on the bottom and the back surface and then I'll be putting them, once I get the doors on they'll fit on like that and then I'll continue the stripes running down the doors. The stripes are really important because what they're going to do is really add to the illusion uh, it's kind of a psychological thing if you look into a box like this and you see stripes going down you're going to assume that they're going all the way to the back and then up of course we're going to fool the viewer by putting a mirror halfway in here so I got my two mirrors cut uh, to the same dimensions it's not going to take a lot of epoxy to hold these together. I just don't want them sliding around once they're inside of the box. So I'll just put a few dollops on each corner and carefully line it up and let it set. And of course now you can see how it's beginning to look. I've got the stripes all the way in and I still haven't put the lid on. 
But wait, are you really seeing it or are you seeing a reflection of those stripes? And there's the mirror. I'm just using a brush to uh, put a little bit of epoxy where the mirror right here meets the wood. And that'll just help hold it down and keep it from rattling around inside of the box. I can finally put the top onto the box. I've got the mirror in there and I've put some glue on the top. Now I'm just going to carefully tack it in. Now I'm just making a little recession on the door to hold the magnet uh, for the latch. It's really important on this kind of magic box to get really, really bright colors for the outside because those bright colors will just further distract the audience from seeing what's inside where it's very dark. Now that I've got all the uh, decorations put on the outside of the box, I need to seal those in so they're not going to peel off. And I'm going to use a product called Mod Podge. Uh, it's used for decoupage, which is a, uh, a craft technique. And you can, you can pick this up at a craft store. And I have a sneaking suspicion that this stuff is really... Uh, just white glue and maybe thin down a little bit to where it dries clear. But anyways, you can just paint this right over any kind of uh, uh, paper and it'll seal it on in. So I'll put a few coats of this on. One of the neat things about using that decoupage glue finish is that after a lot of coats and once it's dry, you can actually rub it out to a nice smooth glossy finish the way you would lacquer or varnish. And with the doors finally hinged in place, I can do the final step and apply this white tape to the inside of the doors. And there you have it. The magic box is complete. The hinges are on. All of the uh, sides have a nice smooth finish. And uh, I cleaned out the mirror with some glass cleaner. <laughs> So uh, I hope you enjoyed this project and uh, look forward to the next one. That's the way we became the Brady Bunch.